happening. So thank you so much, Gauri, for joining. Okay, so let's start. I think it's really wonderful to have you here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, so basically, I think I'll make it in a very simpler manner. Apne hoslo se nari bhar rahi unchi udan, na koi shikayat, na koi thakan. I just recently read uh, by Miss Gage. She said that a you know, a woman with a voice is by definition a strong woman, but the search to find that voice can be remarkably different and difficult too. So today we have Gauri Das, a strategic HR leader with one and a half decade of experience in crafting and aligning HR strategy with business goals. She not only supports business leader, but also individuals in driving the business performance and improving capabilities. I know that she's actually focusing on elevating, you know, the employee's experience. She drives the right culture in alignment with organization values. I have personally known her. She is really a learner of life, having a business acumen, adaptability, resilience, and data mindset defining her well. Well, some, her, some of her achievement I would like to highlight. HR 100 under 40, top HR mind of India, Economic Times, young HR leader, LinkedIn person of the year 2020, that during COVID times, CEO of recognition. I think in the wonderful one is standing ovation from 300 plus colleagues uh, on a day of exit in one of our assignment. A warm welcome to you, Ms. Gauri. I think, thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Anuba, for the lovely introduction. And what you said, it definitely resonates well with me because mushkil to hoti hai yahan tak and as women, all of us have seen that uh, road to this, uh, where we are today for all of us is not easy. So I definitely resonate with that. I know, I totally agree. So let me ask the first thing to you, Gauri. How did you manage so many eclats in such a small stint, you know? I think being at the right place at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I totally agree with that. So maybe still there has to be some mantra to it, you know, there, you know, getting such a great recognition, achievements, accolades, uh, you know, people strive for it and still struggling for it, but you made it in just a decade, you know, so there has to be a mantra. Yes, I think it comes from my childhood. So I'll take you uh, back a few years back. Okay. <laughs> so this was, uh, I was born in UP. I come from Eastern UP which is uh, a very well known rather it's kind of uh, so it's not a very bright place for uh, women women are not very respected there uh, but I was though I was born there I was brought up in Madhya Pradesh so uh, my uh, early years uh, say for four or five years uh, I was in a very small village uh, and uh, this place was a uh, heaven. I mean, there was a well inside the campus. We were in a factory and there were, you name the tree and uh, it would be theirs. There was a huge uh, place and we could play gulli danda. So that's what I remember about my childhood the most. And I team in the team, Because I was youngest amongst all of them and I didn't take anyone. So, our piche mountain tha, so we used to go in the evening to mountain as well. And that's how the childhood started. On the flip side of it, as we always know, life kuch deti hai, so there is some cost. And this cost was uh, unavailability of good schools. 
so i started studying in such a school where wo jo zameen pe baith ke padhte and you have your uh, book in your hand and uh, the cost was that i was uh, Uh, not having my education in english medium it was kind of started for me in the 6th standard so that was most difficult thing for me and when i went to a bigger city for my engineering uh, this institute was second ranking institute in madhya pradesh and uh, they had people from all over the world so academics was not a challenge for me the challenge was english because that was a language which everybody was using and i would have so inferiority complex that i can't speak well and uh, when i'm speaking people are laughing at me this is how i used to judge myself so whatever it taught me that uh, resilience is is i would say is my mantra and then when i completed my i was about to complete my engineering and i appeared for uh, mba because one of my professors told me that you would make a good hr leader Uh, i tried doing that but before i could take admission i was married off so that was another uh, challenge that life threw on me not only that after that i went to assam and i would kind of curse myself because all my classmates they were in uh, us and they were because we i was computer engineer and this was a class of engineers and they were earning handsomely and here i was starting with 4500 per month in a city called uh, guwahati which many people hadn't heard at that point of time and i would be like i would not be able to do anything good in my career but life again came to rescue and uh, i started my career in hr so or uh, then again i went to assam as uh, sorry gujarat it was similar and then i had to take a break a nuclear family taking care of a child a bigger city like mumbai so this resilience kept me going and i think that is the, that is the most important mantra amazing i think uh, it's uh, really nice to hear about your you know the childhood your gully danda which we used to play and i mean the youngster would not even know what exactly yeah. that is we used to play stapu you know so uh, uh, the resilience you did talk about but you know i you just mentioned having uh, computer engineering and then doing an mba but what made you become an hr professional you know what motivated you to go into that line apart from your uh, you know your uh, faculty saying that you can be a great hr professional but there has to be something uh, so it was all blank and wow kuch pata nahi hota tha i'm sure you will uh, resonate with that my brother was an engineer and there were only two streams if you are good in academics you would either become an engineer or a doctor and i am very bad in drawing so i was away from biology and that's how engineering happened that was the sole reason of engineering and after that i was not sure because uh, when i did it for two years and i would sit before machines i would not kind of feel very good but i wasn't aware because there were no psychometric tests and there was no aptitude test to know what you like who, what you are good at mm-hmm. what are your strengths mm-hmm. so this management professor um, he told me you should do this because anyways you are not liking engineering and you think that you should be amongst people so that was only information i had about hr <laughs> that you will be amongst people not machine okay. it's kind of uh, not by by kind of uh, thought but by uh, uh, like kind of <laughs> it happened it happened it happened it happened all right very good so um, you started you know you started your career from guwahati to gujarat then mumbai uh, did you ever imagine that you would be a leader in a male dominated profession never never and how do you feel today yeah so it's it has been a long journey and uh, i am blessed because i am from financial services and uh, i work amongst bankers uh, and they have seen many ceos women ceos it can be kalpana mohapatra or there is uh, zareen daruwala or there is shikha sharma so for them they know that women can be ceos and women can do anything but when i go, go out and when i meet my vendors or uh, support uh, or kind of uh, all the stakeholders not everybody is so open to this idea of uh, listening to something from a woman so that challenge always comes in and uh, many a times it's like uh, maybe she's just a token in the room maybe there's no brain she's there because she's there and if you do very good it could be kind of protege not your own efforts not your own talent it would be all about having the right connections or whatever it's said in 
I mean, in terms of when a woman do something great, mm -hmm. and everybody would think that um, oh, okay, there's there must be something which she must be doing great other than talent and other than hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. So. Uh... I mean, I, I, you did talk about Kalpana Morpariya, ma'am, Shikha Sharma. You know, you remind me of my ICICI bank days because at that stint, uh, both the ladies were there with uh, Chanda ma'am and Madhvi Puri Bush, you know. Yeah. Uh, so coming in that league, uh, you know, uh, how do you feel that are the biggest challenge faced by the woman in the leadership role? As per you. I think uh, we are not taken seriously and... Uh, Unless, say, if you look at me, there will be challenges in, in terms of uh, my height or the way I look. I would not look like somebody who has uh, has good knowledge about anything, uh, look, would look very young to people and they will think that, okay, she can't do anything much. Uh, whatever we tell her, she will be doing and whatever she proposes, it would be just from the fancies of whatever she has thought. There is no knowledge behind it. So that is one thing which I have seen uh, many a times that this is how women are looked at. Uh, they are not considered to be uh, grainy or doing something great. Say for an example, um, yeah. we, I can do engineering, but people would uh, question me when they call me that I'm calling from so-and-so financial services firm and uh, can I speak to your husband for your finances? I mean, if I can do engineering, why can't I manage my finances? But this is how, uh, and then they will ask who takes decision in terms of uh, buying shares or buying any financial product. So this is how uh, you always uh, find people behaving. Oh, I totally agree. I am, I think I'm putting myself in your shoes. You know, I actually feeling that you are sharing my life. You know, I think we have so much common. So, I mean, uh, you just mentioned that, uh, you know, when you get a call from the best of the people and who manages the finances, who manages the home. So, at your place, who do it? Who takes the decision? So, let me <laughs> ask it right away from you know, to you. So, for us, uh, it's uh, our own decisions. Nobody dictates it for anyone. But uh, we we do seek our uh, thought. I mean, our uh, views on uh, taking a big decision. If it is a small decision, then we don't care. Mm -hmm. what's happening and we are kind of weekend family because uh, we hardly get time to be doing weekdays so not very much uh, interference in terms of uh, connecting with uh, uh, each other on decisions but yes if there is a, a decision which is very important then definitely we will come together and now even my 12 years old she is also part of decision making so it's collective decision -making. Fabulous. Lovely. I think the management is flowing in your organization. Come in your family also. So if uh, let me understand, uh, who is that one person who really inspired you the most? I think, uh, uh, I just repeat that. Uh, is there someone who inspired you the most, Gauri? Okay, so just let's wait for... Okay, could you just, uh, one second. Uh, Kamakshi, could you just give me a shout that uh, if you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we can hear you. And you are on mute. You are on mute. Okay, uh, I just wait for Gauri. I think there's some connectivity issue. We just wait sure. for a moment, right? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you so much. I think there was some connectivity issue. No problem. It's the some set of glitches we can always expect. Okay, so uh, Gauri, uh, you can hear me now well? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you. So uh, I was just trying to understand, you know, uh, understanding the challenges, uh, you know, in the people in the, you know, women in the leadership role, the family orientation. Who's the one person who really inspired you? Uh, it's my mom. So like I said, my background from Eastern UP, so she's not very educated. Okay. But the most important value that I got from her is respect for self and others. So this self-respect is critical for women because I have realized that many a times we don't believe on ourselves. 
Yes. We ourselves have this mindset that we are not good enough and we need support all the time. And we don't respect our own self. So this value, because I saw her, though she is not very educated, but she made it uh, happen for us. Mm -hmm. uh, for somebody who comes from my background, being an engineer is, is something which is very great in those days. So for uh, us, she made it, made it happen. And she told us that you have to make a mark for yourself. And that's why I, I gained inspiration from her. And it's really amazing to see how she herself, despite all the odds and all the challenges, I'm much, much better. I should be doing well. Amazing. I mean, I must uh, go down to your mom's thought, you know, and self-respect is the most important thing. Uh, you know, so now let me shift from the personal side to the professional front. We see a uh, lot of changes are happening in the banking sector. You know, a lot of great banks are getting united. We just saw recently Union Bank is got, you know, with the Andhra and Corporation Bank, you know. Uh, can you just give us a quick tips to the millennials on the banking and its future? What is I can't on? hear you well. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, one second. Your voice is audible, ma'am. Maybe she has some connection. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. So can you hear me now, Gauri? Yes, yeah, back. Okay. So I was just saying, okay, moving from the, uh, you know, the personal front to the corporate front, I wanted to understand because there's a lot of uh, collaboration is happening between various banks. So any tips you would like to give to the millennials on the, you know, on the banking sector, if they want to join and the future of the bank? Gauri, can you hear me? Absolutely. Another okay. challenge, you know, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. Absolutely okay. You know, I think uh, uh, we have to live with all such kind of uh, challenges. So it's absolutely okay. So I was just trying to understand from you, basically, the question was uh, for you that as there is a change in the banking sector, you know, I just gave an example that how, uh, you know, uh, the banks are getting collaborated, you know, the merge together, you know. So what quick tips you would like to give it to the millennials, you know, for the future of it? So I think future of banking lies in technology. FinTech is the future. And... Uh, Many of us have memories of those Bank of Americas and Citibank, which will pay handsomely. And the, the job title of a banker would be most coveted, uh, one of the most coveted roles that people would look forward to. But things are changing now. There are a lot many regulations. And uh, it's all about being agile, like you rightly pointed that uh, they, there is merger and there is acquisition and all these, this is happening. So you got to be really, really agile and you got to be there when required. So that's where technology is going to play a very important role. And that's how everyone should be thorough with technology. I mean, a very nice insight, Gauri. I think uh, that's very good thought. Uh, yes, I remember when I joined bank, we were working on Finacle and Finacle was pretty new to me and we had to spend a lot of man hours into it, you know. So uh, I feel, uh, Gauri, uh, you know, I would like to know from you now is, because we're talking about Pehchan, you know, creating your yeah. own identity. Uh, what would advice you will give it to the females, you know, the women uh, of all the age groups, you know? So I feel so much. Uh, I, I, I was just saying that, yes, today is a very good, uh, you know, hide and seek with the technology we are playing. So it's okay. Absolutely. So, uh, Gauri, I will just rephrase my question to you that we are talking about Pehchan for a woman, you know. Uh, as per you, how the females can create their own identity? What are the quick advice you would like to give to them? The first one would be believe in yourself. Okay. And it starts from self-awareness. Many a times we don't know what are our strengths. 
and uh, we just play along with others whosoever advises and we get lot of lot more advices than men so that is one thing i think it's gone again i am just hoping that <laughs> no uh, thanks so much i to i think this is working working very well fine yes absolutely we can hear you pretty fine all to you yeah so i was saying the first thing when it comes to identity is self belief that i have it in me and i can do it now how do we get that self belief and self confidence number one uh, we have to understand ourselves first self awareness is the key here so do i really understand what are my strengths and what am i not so good at so that when i take a decision i know in terms of career especially i know what i would be doing well and what i really like or not and how do we do that there are so many psychometric and aptitude test which will tell us what what is good about us and what is our strength and uh, that would be number one step second is shut your inner critic up because your inner critic will keep telling you you are not good enough you will not be able to manage this that kind of fear which we always have right and this fear of shame it becomes a multiple for women because we do something with full confidence and all eyes are on us if we succeed there will be few things few good things will be talked about us but if we fail there will be lot much more which would be said maine bola tha mat karo ye so these kind of things would always come uh, come by and that's where uh, we have to have additional self belief and we have to stop this inner critic because if we become negative like they say whatever you think you are right so if you think you can't do it you can't do it yeah. and uh, that is second thing third is self compassion and uh, all these things like that i'm sharing i have been through them i had no self compassion i had never even thought about self compassion and uh, like i said i took a break and uh, restarted my career in mumbai and when that happened uh, i my daughter was just 4 months old when we came here and i was on a break for 2 years after coming back i had this thought process in my mind that my i have to be a super woman every responsibility is mine and uh, my daughter should be excellent in all fields where she goes she has to participate in all competitions and she has to win my home should be spick and span and everything should be amazing at home and at work i need to put in 100 and 150% because i'm back from break and if i don't put in that and i don't get a highest rating all the time my career would not take shape now i am laughing at it because but this was the thought process in my mind and in the process i had no time for myself there was no me time there was no me thought also and it ended up uh, i having back pain in at the age of 30 years and that, that was kind of eye opening uh, event for me this incident led me to realize that i need to focus on myself as well and good is good enough i don't have to be perfect yeah so these are three things that i have faced in my own life and these have been my guiding principles very nice so i mean great thought i like that element of when you mention good is good enough you know i think uh, no need to become a uh, you know so having a superwoman syndrome yes. with us you know i think it takes time for us to realize and understand uh, great insight uh, gauri uh, one of the question again i would like to know from you is you know we have a prism philosophy which is having a very sound profound thought of prepare respect implement share and maintain which is an acronym Uh, which factor is the most important for you in your life, and why? Uh, it's implement. Okay. Because I strongly believe that an idea is only as good as its execution. So if you have a brilliant idea, which many people will come forward with, mm -hmm. but you can't execute it uh, to the not perfection again to the good level. you would not be having any results from the the idea so you should definitely have that strategic view and the idea but execution remains the key
Hmm. So I would say that implementation is what I would go for if I have to choose only one. But the all five elements are critical, and it's amazing acronym, uh, Anubha. Congrats Thank to you. you on making this. Thank you so much. In fact, yes. Uh, but I must appreciate uh, you nailing it very rightly that implementation is key to success. You know, uh, the inception of any thought is very nice, but till the time it is not executed, it actually has no relevance. so uh, you know uh, there are a lot i can talk to you but i have a time shortage with me so i have millennials with us you know in my team also so uh, i have kamakshi with me she is going to ask a couple of questions if you allow her kamakshi can you just uh, unmute yourself and ask your thoughts to gauri ma'am yes ma'am good evening ma'am good evening kamakshi how are you pleasure to have you here thank you thank you so much Uh, so ma'am i would like to know that uh, how do you manage your personal and professional life all together i think uh, it was never a separate thing for me but now covid has anyways uh, erased all the boundaries so for me it's like uh, my day starts with uh, household things uh, of, of of course these days Uh, but i do follow a ritual and i start my day say i was uh, commuting for work and i used to commute for one and a half hours so i kind of commute for i mean uh, walk for 5 minutes to set up my mind tell my mind that okay it's work time now be there then i take a break and uh, that's lunch time the way it used to happen and when i end my day then also i follow a uh, ritual uh, that i have to walk for 5 minutes and tell my mind it's time to close now so following this discipline and uh, have setting boundaries becomes very important uh, so i am blessed again to have uh, colleagues who would not call and it's not a culture in uh, my organization that people will keep calling but if somebody is on the other side of it i would not mind telling them that uh, it's saturday or sunday or it's after 7 pm and let's discuss it tomorrow so that kind of say ability to say no as set the right boundaries is important uh, since i handle hr many a times there will be some emergency cases also so those are fine that, that must be taken care of uh, but when it comes to normal things which can wait till tomorrow i would tell them to wait so that is another thing but through which i manage my work life balance yeah so i think following that discipline and having a right culture in the organization and third ability to say no in uh, in a respectful way is what i would say helps me great nice yes any other question come up if you have yeah ma'am uh mom can you guide students like us uh, uh, who are going to work in the industry and other working women that on uh, uh, how to uh, how can we overcome the patriarchal mindset at the work uh, things are improving kamakshi so i'm sure uh, when you are entering it's much better than how it was and people are now much more educated there's a lot of awareness and that's how we are celebrating uh, iwd so uh, things are much better but still again uh, i would say it starts from us if we go out there and we tell them we are not confident about something you got to help me then definitely there's a problem but at the same time seeking for help is not bad we must ask for help and uh, we must give him i mean help others also and that's what my mantra is when it comes to choose to challenge this year because as women we avoid seeking help we and that's where our, we avoid networking also we would not like to go out, out meet people and seek their professional help whenever required and that's where because we know network is net worth and what you know is important but who you know is critical so asking for help networking we have to be there we have to we have to just forget that there is there are different genders at workplace because it's not only about two genders it's about lot of diversity these days organizations are having those policies and they are coming up with those frameworks which actually support us as a woman but we can help ourselves the best and if we don't do that no organization policy would ever help us so i think uh, having that right frame of mind and self belief would definitely help so when you enter your workforce i mean uh, uh, you have to re really think that i am going to do the best and i am the best amazing uh, a very nice insight thank you so much kamakshi for asking the question and gauri you uh, nailed it beautifully i think uh, you know so uh, i know it's like uh, time is 
a big constraint. I really want to have a, another, uh, you know, a long session with you. And, you know, they really have a long list of questions to be asking from you that how are you further, you know, uh, planning in the future. But I'm surely we are going to have a next session very soon. So thank you so very much, Gauri, for, uh, you know, joining us. Prisma is truly delighted to have you. So we are going to close the session now with the beautiful lines, which I'm taking you, uh, you know, taking from your thoughts of, good is good enough or you know superwoman syndrome or maybe you know uh, great challenges that we have so i could sense is that end of the day i'm a mother i'm a wife i'm a daughter yet i'm a person with a, my own identity meri apni pehchan with gauri and with prism thank you so much uh, and thank you audience for joining us Thank you so much and my apologies on this hide and seek with the net connection today. So next time, whenever we are doing it, I'm sure it would be much better. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gauri. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank so you. Bye. 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 Bye.